In this part, we're going to look at how Hamiltonian mechanics relate to measurements. We've seen that part of it is equivalent to say that future states are a function of previous states, and that makes us think a little bit about determinism, so we want to understand how determinism and reversibility would work in context of uh, measurement. So, a system would be deterministic if uh, uh, the final measurement is a function of the initial measurement, and uh, it would be reversible if the initial measurement is a function of the final measurement. And uh, it would be both deterministic and reversible, of course, this function would be the inverse of this. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people stop here, but there is a problem. This is not enough for determinism and reversibility, because you see, a measurement is composed of two things. It's composed of a value, but also of the uncertainty. So, imagine that we can predict the future value of a system, but only at an uncertainty that it's one million times bigger than the original uncertainty. Well, that prediction wouldn't tell us much. And the same thing if it would be reversible, if we would be able to reconstruct the initial uh, value, but only with an uncertainty that is a million times bigger, Again, it wouldn't, it wouldn't tell us much. So, what we're going to require is that we can reconstruct the initial uh, measurement, we can predict the final measurement, but we have to do it at least at the same level of uncertainty. So, let's see what that, how that works in a simple case of a single measurement. So, here we have the initial value, x, and we have some uncertainty associated with it. And then we have the final value, which is always here, but we have three cases. One in which the uncertainty is smaller, one in which the uncertainty is exactly the same, and one in which the uncertainty is bigger. Now, if the uncertainty is smaller, it's clear that we are, be, we are able to make a future prediction at least at the same level of uncertainty. In fact, we're making a better prediction than we had the original. But the system is not reversible because knowing the final measurement, we can go back at the same level of uncertainty. The uncertainty is bigger. The opposite happens if our uncertainty gets bigger. The system is not deterministic because we can't tell the future value at the same level of uncertainty, but it is reversible because we can say the initial value at a, at a level of uncertainty that it's smaller to what we had in the final state. So if the system Re remains, if the uncertainty remains the same, then the system is both deterministic and reversible. Now, this is very easy to see in one variable, but in two variables it becomes a little bit trickier. Because you see, suppose that we have a measurement in x and y, and we have uncertainty associated with x, and we have an uncertainty associated with y. Now we have this region that represents our measurement. Now, if we change our axis and we have x prime and y prime, now, if we would consider the uncertainty only as uh, a, an uncertainty in y prime and uncertainty in x prime, we will get a much bigger area than what we have. So, just thinking in terms of sigma in all the variables that we are measuring, it's not enough. That's not the right way to generalize. So, the right way to generalize is this. We are going to have... Uh, uh, our value is going to be represented by a point in phase space because we have two variables, we have x and p, and this is just going to be the value, the average value. Now the uncertainty instead is going to be represented by the covariance matrix, which has, uh, which considers the variance in x, we consider the variance in p, but it also considers the covariance in x and p. So what we're going to look at as an indicator of uncertainty, we're going to look at the determinant of the covariance matrix. So now we can recast our definition of determinism and reversibility. For determinism, we mean that we do have our final value as a function of the initial value, but also that the final uncertainty represented by the determinant of the covariance matrix is less or equal the initial uncertainty. And for reversibility, we have the opposite. We have that the initial value is a function of the final value, and that the initial uncertainty is less or equal the final uncertainty. Okay? So if we now will want to have uh, both of them, of course, the uncertainty will have to remain the same. It is going to, be, is, is going to have to be equal. 
So the first part, uh, we, if we consider that, that the, our evolution is infinitesimal, so that, that our final t is just a t plus dt, and if we consider that the change is infinitesimal, so that we can be written as a, a first order, we have first order expansion in t, then we already see that we have our first condition, our first mathematical condition for Hamiltonian mechanics. We have that the point at t plus dt is equal to the point in t plus the s vector, our s vector at the point p. For the second condition, we're going to require that the final uncertainty is equal to the initial uncertainty. And again, we're going to assume that we have an infinitesimal transformation, so the final time is actually t plus dt. Now, the way that the covariance matrix changes under an, a transformation is going to be that it gets sandwiched in by the Jacobian of the transformation and the Jacobian transform. This is just how it transforms. Now we know that the determinant of the product is the product of the determinants. Now we also know that the determinant of the transport is, also, is going to be the determinant of the original matrix. And now we know, because we've, we have said it here, that all of this has to be equal to the initial uncertainty. So what we have to require is the determinant of the Jacobian being equal to plus or minus one. If we require this, then this equation is satisfied. Now, what does it mean mathematically to require this? Now, this is the Jacobian, and each element of the Jacobian is the derivative of the final variable against the one of the initial variables. So we, here we have, uh, on the rows, we have x in t plus dt, and p at t plus dt, and the columns we have x and p. So what we do is write the new variables in terms of the old variables, and then we're going to have the derivative of x in x is going to be equal to 1, the derivative of p against p is going to be equal to 1, and then we have all the other derivative of the sx and has p's. So now we have to calculate the determinant of this, so we multiply these terms against this term, so we have 1 times 1, which is going to give us 1, we have derivative of sx in x times dt times 1, so if this goes here, and we have this term times this term, and it goes here, and then all the other terms are of order of dt squared, so we can disregard this. And then we have to set that this is equal to plus or minus 1. Now it's clear that this cannot be minus 1, this has to be 1, so the minus 1 uh, solution is ruled out, and then we have to set that this term here is equal to 0. But look at this, the derivative of sx in x plus the derivative of sp in p is then other than the divergence. So requiring that the Jacobian is equal to 1 equals requiring that the divergent of s is equal to 0, which is the other condition that we needed for Hamiltonian mechanics. So what is the Jacobian determinant? So the Jacobian determinant tells us the factor by which the transformation expands or shrinks the area. So if you have an initial region of phase space, and you transform it, the final area is going to be the initial area times the determinant of the Jacobian. Now the fact that the Jacobian is different than zero means that the transformation is invertible, because if all the areas collapse to one point, then of course we can't go back. The fact that the Jacobian determinant is greater than zero, it means that we don't flip along the x or the p direction. And of course, if we set the, 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 the Jacobian equal to 1, then it means that we're preserving the area. So we have seen that Hamilton mechanics for one degree of freedom, in terms of measurement, it's equivalent than requiring that past and future measurement can be reconstructed at the same level of uncertainty. And in particular, preserving the uncertainty means preserving the area in phase space, which is exactly what Hamiltonian mechanics does.